Welcome everyone to the Global Nutanix User Group Webinar on AI on Nutanix. I'm Angelo, I'll be your host for today. We're thrilled to have you joining us virtually from around the world as we dive in to the exciting world of AI. Let me just give you a quick overview of what we'll be covering today. We'll start with the fundamentals of Gen AI to ensure we're all on the same page. Then we'll explore how GPT in a box can help with your Gen AI, Gen AI initiatives. We have a demo of an AI ML workload running on GPT in a box. And we'll give you a sneak peek at GPT 2.0 interface currently under development. Plus we're giving away a Nutanix Yeti 26 ounce Rambler to two lucky winners. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our main speaker for today. Laura Giordana is a Nutanix technical marketing engineer with experience in AI and ML technologies. Laura will be guiding us through today's topics and demos. And along with her, we'll have Luke and Ashwini, two of her colleagues in the chat answering questions. But before we dive in, in the chat, I want you to answer a question for me. In what year do you predict AI will surpass human intelligence? I'll read out a few of the responses before we hand it over to Laura. Twenty forty, wow. Twenty thirty five, twenty thirty. Okay, twenty fifty, wow. Twenty twenty three. That was last year. <laughs> good one. Good. Great. Thank you all for sharing. Now, please welcome Laura Giordana. Thank you, Angelo. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, thanks for that great introduction, Angelo. So. I want to talk today about um, the uh, building enterprise AI and some of the fundamentals, um, how what Nutanix is doing in the space, and of course uh, show some demos. So let's let's dive right in. So of course you all know AI and ML is not a new thing, right? It's been around for over fifty years, fifty to seventy years even, but it's really disrupting the enterprise now. And if we look at the components required for building AI, right? You need large scale compute uh, and you need a lot of data for it to learn from. And so the increased performance of GPUs in the past uh, several years and the computing systems speeding up and surpassing our needs in many cases, as well as being able to leverage the vast amounts of data available on the internet is really what's driving this disruption. And as we mentioned, AI is not new, but Gen AI is, right? So if we look at AI, there's kind of two broad buckets you can put it in. We have discriminative AI, which detects patterns in existing data. It differentiates between different types of data. So this is things like uh, object recognition on your phone, text and speech recognition, uh, stock price prediction. So the finance industry has been using uh, this type of AI for a really long time, right? Um, and we use in our own uh, products as well. And if you've ever seen the show Silicon Valley, the, the hot dog, not hot dog app was a prime example of discriminative AI. Um, and as I mentioned, Nutanix Cloud Manager, capacity planning, anomaly detection, those are all types of discriminative AI. Now, Gen AI, this is really what's the new kid on the block, right? This is where we're generating net new data and content, everything from text, images, code, and music, and giving you kind of brand new things, uh, other not not working off existing data, but creating brand new data. And another one of my favorite kind of pop culture references, Zoolander, great movie, 2000, early 2000s. Gen AI is the hot topic right now, right? And, and I think everyone can probably uh, give an answer to why that is, right? Almost two years ago now, I can't believe it's been that long, right? We're, we're almost to November. Um, in 2022, ChatGPT came out and took the world by storm, and it really transformed data gathering from what we knew with Google, from just getting a list of results and now giving you an actual answer, right? So this opened up generative AI to everybody, your, your, your parents, your grandparents, all ages are able to easily use this form um, to get answers quickly. And now this is kind of the same thing that Google pioneered back in 1998, where that really transformed the way we worked back then. ChatGPT really transforms, is transforming the way we work uh, going forward. Um, and of course, there's still things to work out in terms of hallucinations, right? 
uh, we need to fact check, you know, check, GPT can make up answers. There's security and privacy concerns, but the cat's really out of the bag and businesses everywhere, organizations everywhere are trying to understand how they can leverage this technology um, to drive their business forward and really gain efficiencies. And what we saw is, so we, we commissioned here at Nutanix a global research study to learn about the state of global enterprise AI deployments. Uh, we, um, we surveyed 650 IT, DevOps, and platform engineering decision makers uh, about their AI technology strategy and adoption to really establish a baseline picture of the current enterprise AI deployment and trends, what their planned implementations were, uh, and any challenges that they, that, they, that they saw, right? And so the main conclusion was that the adoption of enterprise AI applications will bring on a new wave of IT infrastructure modernization um, and focus a lot on data mobility, security, and protection. But you can see across the board, AI is considered a priority. Um, they they uh, know that IT infrastructure needs to be improved and modernized to support AI. And Edge is going to uh, you know, play a big role here as well uh, as you push AI out to your kind of Edge branch remote office locations. So let's explore the most common use cases that we see driving, uh, transforming this business uh, innovation today, right? Private chat GPT. Everyone's really impressed with what ChatGPT is able to do. And they're, you know, coming out with new models all the time. And Google has their own, you know, they've built it into the search browser as well, uh, in Google Chrome, for example. Um, but a lot of organizations want the same technology in their own environment to understand their company data um, and, and work off of their documents and data. But they don't want to necessarily subject their data to a third party, right? So they want that same experience, but they want it private on premises. Uh, the other, another key use case is co-piloting. So code co-piloting, as well as content creation. Um, so really reducing the time to value for customers or end users. So for example, developers, many most developers I know don't do not like writing unit tests. So but it's something that has to be done. So being able to offload that to a, a code co-piloting tool um, is, is a key use case as well as content creation. And then machine learning tools, right? This is the basis for the previously mentioned use cases. So if you're looking to fine tune your own models, build custom AI apps in house, this is another key use case that can benefit from, from Gen AI. If you look at the overall theme across these use cases, it's all about increasing productivity and efficiency. Um, achieving more in less time, augmenting your workers to free them up from kind of the mundane, um, you know, uh, routine tasks so they can be freed up for more innovative tasks and not spend time searching for answers or writing unit tests. And of course, you know, there's more industry specific use cases we can look at, right? Uh, digging into kind of three major verticals here, right? We've talked about finance, how they've been using discriminative AI for a long time, right? They were early AI adopters. Um, to do things like fraud detection and stock price prediction. And Gen AI can help make these systems even more intelligent and more compliant. Healthcare, so claims processing is another popular use case we're hearing about uh, to simplify claims submissions, processing, also the case with insurance, with insurance claims. Uh, other use cases in healthcare, optimizing diagnostics, you know, doing more um, precision medical strategies and personal individual diagnostics. Um, and then on the public sector, you know, the public sector can tend to be a little more legacy in terms of the systems that they're using. Uh, and Gen AI can help improve some of these inefficiencies, provide more intelligent fraud detection, and then overall just provide a better uh, experience for their constituents. Now, what we're hearing from our customers uh, when we ask about, you know, AI and, and what they're trying to do, there's three key things that they, that they mention. One is they don't know where to start, right? Gen AI still is relatively bleeding edge. Skill sets are still catching up. Things are changing day to day. So that's that's one kind of blocker or challenge that they're having. Second is the uh, company data and privacy, right? You you There's so many cloud services out there, but they many organizations can't risk putting their data in cloud services or they have mandates to not put certain data in cloud services, right? Like healthcare has very strict rules about where they can have data. Um, you know, there's been articles about companies who've had employees kind of just using the free version of chat GPT and unknowingly exposing their company intellectual property. Organizations really want to avoid this. 
And then kind of going with the skill set, right? They need help. They need help to get a successful running solution. Um, a full stack turnkey solution is really needed here, right? You have your IT team. They know infrastructure, but they don't know machine learning. Machine learning, they're data scientists. They want to run their Jupyter notebooks, but they don't know infrastructure. And so we need a platform that can really accommodate everybody. And when we look at implementing AI solutions, you know, there's, there's a couple of potential paths. Um, you can, not shown here, you can build your own, of course, if you have GPUs and all that, but that can be very complicated uh, with different software and hardware layers and dependencies and vendors that you have to manage, um, especially upon upgrade time. Um, the cloud here on the left, right, that's the easy button. There's so many cloud services out there that offer AI fine tuning, AI inference in the cloud. Uh, minimal friction gets you up and running very, very quickly. But of course, there's some trade offs here. Um, you know, we talked about the risk of exposing private data to the cloud, but depending on the cloud service, right, there's big ones, there's small ones. Um, how easy it is to move your data out of that service if you need to, right? We need to think about lock in. Uh, you also need to think about latency. That can be a factor when you're working with remote edge sites or branch offices, right? You, you don't want your customer service rep at your branch office waiting for you know inference in a cloud service and the latency is poor or something image recognition to get split second decisions um, and, and and generate recommendations based on fraud activity we don't want that to be subject to latency and then of course cost cost is a, a big factor as well uh too because you do a poc in the cloud right it's it's all fine and good and then once you open it up to everybody now all of a sudden you've got your whole organization hitting uh, these API endpoints and those all cost money. And so you can uh, be hit with unexpected bills at the end of the month. So really having kind of a full stack solution um, that, that provides everything you need with built-in privacy and data protection, you know the total kind of cost of ownership, you can use that as much as you want. That's really the ideal uh, situation here. And if we look at what it takes to build a Gen AI app today, right? Um, there's all these different parts that you need, right? You need on the left, compute, storage, GPU, you need the infrastructure, you need a Kubernetes cluster. Most production AI workloads are going to be running on Kubernetes. You need your, your uh, large language models. You need an inference endpoint to access that model. Um, you need to ensure your models are protected. You need to uh, ensure you have user access control. And then finally, you have your AI application, which is kind of the tip of the iceberg, which is what all your users are seeing, but there's so much underneath that, that needs to be thought about. And so uh, what we're offering with Nutanix and, and Enterprise AI GPT in a box 2.0, you start with the platform, you start with the AOS and AHV that you know. Uh, we have our Nutanix Kubernetes platform um, going GA shortly. Uh, things like NDK for snapshotting and data protection of your Kubernetes workloads and our Nutanix files and objects. Uh, and then on top of that, we've we've created this GPT in a box platform um, that provides that uh, kind of model management, those inference endpoints and the access control. And then we've kind of reduced down all those steps into just a couple. So now you have an easy way to get your AI application up and running. And just to level set on Nutanix, of course, right? The Nutanix Cloud Platform. I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar with, with, the, with the platform, some may, may not be. So let's just kind of take a step back and, and look at what Nutanix offers. So the Nutanix Cloud Platform is really the foundation for hybrid multi-cloud. And uh, the key takeaway is that it runs, it supports multiple hypervisors. So uh, VMware, uh, AHV, our own AHV uh, running off of KVM. Um, but really the key takeaway is that it supports running any type of app any type of workload. Um, and this includes modern applications such as AI ML. And we wanna support running that anywhere. So that can be on premises in your data center, at your edge locations, in the public cloud with NC2, and uh, you know, in the future, storage services natively in, in the public cloud as well. But, um, but the key really is to support multiple hypervisors, container distributions, provide everything you need, right? We talked about files and objects, provide all these services. So you have these cloud-like services within your own organization in a true hybrid format. So you can have seamless mobility between on-premises and cloud, keep it all on-prem, whatever you wanna do, but just having that kind of flexibility to, to manage those workloads where they need to be. And 
The core functionality that the Nutanix Cloud Platform has offered for, for many years now is, is um, these are actually key capabilities that an enterprise Gen AI application requires. So if we go back a few slides ago where I you know, mentioned IT doesn't know ML, ML doesn't know IT, having simplified operations and a consistent operating model um, to have the, the same operational experience, whether you're running at the edge, whether you're running in your data center at a service provider's data center, um, having that same experience. And then as the cloud admin, as the um, an IT admin, being able to provide self-service for your end users, whether they are developers or they're data scientists, even if they're running different types of applications. So that's something key that uh, the platform can offer. Uh, enterprise data services is another big one. So if we remember, one of the two key components of AI, we talked about compute and we talked about data. So data is a, is a key factor here, whether it's the models or the data set, right? So you need to think about where that data is being stored and how it's being protected. And Nutanix has really been in the business of providing resilient data services for workloads since our inception. So things like replication factor, uh, where we copy data to other disks or nodes in the cluster or racks. We have block and rack awareness as well. Uh, ensuring data integrity, having built-in snapshots and backup and disaster recovery mechanisms. These are things we've done for years. And on top of that, we've built on additional services uh, such as NFS, SMB, uh, S3 compliant storage with Nutanix files and objects, which is where your models and data, your models and data sets will uh, uh, most likely live, right? And then uh, TCO, right? I talked a little bit about this, how the cloud is simple to use, but you get that going and you're gonna start uh, getting skyrocketing bills at the end of the month. It's an unpredictable uh, cost there, right? Um, so uh, with these kind of, um, you know, ongoing costs of, of running an inference endpoint, uh, having a stable platform that you know the upfront capital expense and you can use it as much as you want without having to worry about your bill, that's very key as well. And so our answer to these challenges was GPT in a box. And this is something we launched last August now, so it's almost been a year now. Um, we basically put together um, an opinionated stack, right, using open source tools with, with uh, PyTorch and, and Kubeflow, uh, because we knew there's a lot of tools out there that you can piece together to create a working AI solution. But we wanted to provide this package uh, that our, AI, our own AI team used um, running right on top of AHV and, and Kubernetes, using files and object storage, Nutanix AOS underneath. And of course, the, the foundation is your GPU enabled nodes. And so everything you see in purple here is, is part of the Nutanix Cloud Platform. Um, and then what we've added, the GPT in a box piece is the two dark gray layers there uh, that we've distributed as an open source software package um, and has been validated against several models. And then we also, offered services or we offer services to help you get up and running with this um, and our partnerships as well, uh, as I'll, I'll segue into here. So what we're providing is a AI ready platform to help you get up and running with your Gen AI apps quickly and safely. And if you notice at the top, right, the Gen AI apps we're not talking about too much in terms of Nutanix, because that's all dependent on what your application is and what you're trying to create or, or accomplish here. So. We're working with several partners at our .next um, conference in Barcelona. We uh, we announced our AI partner program, um, where we're working with these partners that have the required elements that are needed for an enterprise AI solution. And so this can include business applications, uh, model operations and lifecycle, compute infrastructure. And so we're working with these partners to develop joint solutions to provide customers like yourself end-to-end -end blueprints of how you can deploy AI in your enterprise with Nutanix and these partners. So for example, you know, just call out Data Robot, for example, they're an end-to-end -end AI platform for building, operating, and governing AI solutions in any environment, whether it's on-prem or at the edge, um, with observability and governance built in. And we have a tech note that we've released that uh, shows exactly how this can be run on our platform. And so what implementation looks like as of today, uh, since August, 2023 of last year, uh, it's deployable, as I mentioned, as an open source software package, and we've made available on our GitHub. 
Um, you install the requirements on your Kubernetes cluster. You run a couple of scripts to download the model directly from Hugging Face, so there's direct integration, or use the custom model, and then start the inference server for your AI application to connect to. So that's what, um, what gets people started. But of course, to really uh, kind of expand this out and make it you know, much more enterprise grade and, and usable, uh, this is a glimpse, and I'll show a live demo of this as well, um, into the uh, interface we're developing here. So um, we're going early access uh, shortly and uh, GA a uh, few months after that, uh, but we're looking at uh, releasing a enterprise AI endpoint uh, manager, model manager, where you'll have enterprise features such as RBAC, logging, observability, stats and metrics, where you can have different types of users who can create their own endpoints and download models. Um, it'll have out of the box support for many models, uh, many more models than the first iteration did that can all be downloaded and created from this interface. And again, I'll sh we'll show, we'll jump into a live demo of this shortly. And so just all the AI applications oh, are the same computing exactly power and app. Uh, a common use case on. as an example, sorry. a simple chatbot. You have you a user who is interacting with the chatbot. You always hear that? And on the back end, the chatbot is querying an endpoint that's backed by a model. Okay, let me uh, hold on one second. And also, sorry, guys. There's a sneak peek of the demo there, but I just wanted to um, kind of just walk through. All right. I just wanted to kind of walk through leading into the demo what we're going to be showing, right? So a chat bot, that's a really common use case. So you have a user who's interacting with the chat bot. Um, and what's happening on the back end is the chatbot is querying an endpoint. So this is your inference API endpoint backed by a model. Of course, you can also leverage techniques such as RAG, retrieval augmented generation, but right now let's just focus on this simple use case, right? So what we're doing with GPT in a box is we're, we're making it easy for you to create these inference API endpoints and manage your models on Nutanix private cloud. So here using Nutanix files or Nutanix objects, um, and then creating those inference endpoints, managing your models, and then having everything contained in this private AI cloud um, while keeping your data and models secure and protected. So that's that was my segue into the demo. Um, so let's take a look now at the demo. Do we have any questions so far we should uh, take a look at or is Okay, so it looks like Ashwini and Luke have been answering some questions. Um, so here, you guys should all be able to see my screen, hopefully. Um, so I'm here logged into our uh, AI inter uh, Enterprise AI GPT in a box 2.0 early access. I'm logged in here as an admin, right? So I have full global visibility into everything that my users are doing and creating. So I can see a summary of all the endpoints. Um, all of the API requests, the top five endpoints, top five API keys being used, uh, the infrastructure summary. So I have key details into the cluster health of all my Kuber of my Kubernetes cluster and all the nodes. You know things like GPU usage. Let's pick one that's actually being used, so we can see the usage of our uh, of our GPUs, and so we can get all the health and and pertinent data of our of our infrastructure as the admin. Coming over here to models, I can see all of the models that have been loaded by different users on the system, right? So I can see Ashwini has been creating a couple of models. Um, we have some other models created too. We have all our endpoints that have been set up, right? So uh, we have three active endpoints. We can get the details for those endpoints. Uh, we get a quick code snippet to be able to access those. And then as the admin, I can come in and manage my users as well. So this is where I can uh, you know, do user management. So I could reset Luke's password or deactivate him if I wanted to. Um, I can create new users, right, with either the admin role or the user role. And so, and then we have more additional information on the compute here as well. So coming in to, I'm going to log in here as um, myself. So let me log in as the end user. A lot of passwords here. So since I don't have anything created, I'm not an admin, right? I can't see anything. I can only see what I have access to. So um, 
it gives me a prompt to, to start creating my models and endpoints. So I actually did load a model already, um, but let's walk through the, the process. So there's two ways that we can import a model. We can either um, do it manually. So if you have a custom model, for example, uh, or your dark site, you can do a manual import from, um, from a file share or a, an S3 bucket. Um, or in this case, let's actually just connect directly to Hugging Face, which is a very popular model hub um, for, for hosting models, right? And so for, for many models, for example, the Meta Llama models, you'll need to have your Hugging Face token uh, entered into the enter, entered in the system. So that's how it, it authenticates you to Hugging Face. So I've already done that here. So I can come in, for example, I can say, um, let's load in the Llama 3 model from, from Meta. Um, I'll give it a name just to identify it in my own list here. And it'll start actually downloading the model. It'll find the storage, download the model. Uh, and then once it's ready and active, we can then go ahead and create our endpoint. So since I have the Mistral model already loaded, let me go ahead and create a new endpoint. So I'm just going to call this Mistral endpoint. I'm going to select my Mistral model. I'll select the uh, GPUs that we have available. Um, it is, it's going to automatically populate our resources here. Uh, I could configure this if I wanted to, but I'll just leave the defaults. Um, and then I can create my API key to be used in. Uh, it's only going to give me this once, so I'll go ahead and copy that out. And that's the key that is is for that endpoint, right? So that key can only be used for the endpoints that it's assigned to. So to keep that kind of secure there. So let's see, Mistral endpoint is being, um, is initializing. So that's gonna take a few minutes. So um, I just wanted to walk you through the process of downloading models and, and creating endpoints. But so let's go ahead, let's go back and look at a model that's already been uh, created and, and the, the endpoints up and running. So I'm gonna log back in here as the admin. Oops. And let's see, for example, I have this Llama 3 8B IT endpoint running um, and we have some API keys um, uh, set up for it. And you, another cool thing about the interface is that once I create the endpoint, right, I can test it out fr uh, directly from the browser. So I can come in here, I can put in a custom request or I can use one of the sample requests. And so as the kind of IT admin or the person that's you know creating these endpoints, I can make sure that it's validated and it's it's working properly before I hand it over to my developer or um, whoever whoever needs access to that endpoint. So once I'm happy that I have that endpoint up and running, I take that endpoint name, that API key, and I have a sample chat app here um, that's using our, our AI endpoint. This is also all OpenAI compliant, so it's portable. It can move around. You know, you can use these endpoints um, wherever. And so I can come in here, and I'm going to go ahead and copy in my endpoint name and my API key. And I'll come in, and I'll ask it, uh, help me plan a trip to Paris for the Olympics, for example. And so it'll give me an answer. And, and so it's just a quick, simple chat app. Um, there's no retrieval augmented generation set up on this right now, but you know that's definitely something that you would want to do as well, especially if you're trying to get your own kind of docs and data um, uh, into into an application. Uh, we also have a I don't think I have a slide on that, but we also have a, a Nutanix validated design that actually does just that. So it helps you you know not only set up this piece of it, but the retrieval augmented generation piece um, to to connect your own database of, of uh, context. So let me switch back to the slides here. And um, so at this point, do we wanna do a poll? Let's uh, maybe throw up one of the poll questions um, before we kind of close it out. Okay, cool. So all the questions are together. Uh, 
yes, the presentation will be shared afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna continue as this poll stays online. Um, but so again, uh, we will share out these slides after. Um, there's also some resources. We have our Nutanix.com slash AI page um, that has everything you need to, to understand more about the solution and, and kind of what we're doing in that space. We have a test drive as well and new test drives coming out for the, uh, the new interface um, shortly. Uh, partner information is all on there as well. So be sure to check that out. Uh, for the existing version of GPT in a box, you know, you could get started today if you wanted to. Uh, all the docs and the, the software packages are out there. Um, so it's on opendocs.nutanix.com. So everything you need there. And then we have some uh, videos and a test drive as well for you to uh, kind of get a little more hands-on and more uh, information on um, how the solution works. Uh, and Angela's also put in uh, the dot next or the next nutanix.com forum. We have an AI section in there. Uh, so feel free to go in there and uh, ask any questions that you have, um, you know, after the fact, uh, we're happy to, to help answer them. Um, and then that's, yeah, that brings me to the end of the, 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 the presentation and demo. So um, I thank you all for joining. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll open it up a little or stay online for a little bit more Q and A. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining and I hope this kind of helps inspire some of your future AI projects.